Hello and welcome to this special program of Budget in Focus. My name is Enrico Wilford and I'm going to be talking with the Minister of Finance, Winston Jordan, about the budget and some of the measures and other facilities that have been put in the budget to make life a little easier. Welcome to the program, Minister Jordan. Very cool. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Well, you've just finished a marathon session in Parliament. It went for about four hours or more. Um, what was the philosophy behind the budget and why you thought that it was necessary to tell, tell us all of that? Yeah, well, um, this is our fifth um, budget. So the philosophy behind it is that we had a manifesto uh, when we came in in 2015. Um, it was built on some assumptions that we will see X, Y, and Z when we get in. It wasn't uh, that. And in fact, for the last couple of years, we were on the back foot, so to speak, firefighting in some places and trying to um, stave off um, um, deficits in, a, in, a, in, a, in other cases. I mean, the big, the big challenge was uh, always Gaisuku. But <clears throat> over, the, over, over time, we have been making uh, measured progress. And finally, Gaisuko is off of our books in terms of transfers. And that's a substantial um, uh, amount. For example, in uh, 2018, when you add the severance that we had to find, plus we transferred $6.5 billion um, to Gaisuko as regular transfers. That's a saving now. That's a, that's a saving roughly of about uh, $14 billion. But when we take out back, some amongst that we have to pay for DNI charges that Kaisuko used to do. We have some money available. And so we were able now to um, finally uh, fly, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, you have the on the horizon the oil and ga gas uh, resources coming up. And so, in a sense, we had to prepare, uh, prepare our people and prepare our institutions um, for the, the new wealth, uh, so to speak. So, this budget. Indeed, it's uh, the largest, yes, but it's large in everything. It's large in conception, it's large in size, it's large in terms of uh, what is intended to uh, achieve, basically. The opposition has been making certain claims upon past budgets and making uh, issues with regard to 30,000 jobs have been lost. You have been putting in so many new taxes and so on. How do you respond to those? Well, I, 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 I wanted um, um, broadcasters and news people to challenge the opposition if they can name the 200 taxes that this government had put in place. I have put no new taxes anywhere in this government. I come up with not a single new tax. All the ex existing taxes were either manipulated uh, downwards. I have not increased any tax that I'm aware of. In, in, in almost every case, I've reduced um, taxes as it relates to income tax. Today, we have gone even further. Um, in the manufacturing sector, I've got a real good fillip. The taxes are being brought down from 30 to 25%, um, um, which is um, a savings for the manufacturing sector. Um, income tax has been brought down, you know, and so on. Value-added tax has been brought down. So I would like the, uh, you to challenge the opposition. Sure, you've been making this mantra statement about government increase 200 taxes. Can you please put it down by way of investment or in a book or someplace? Show us the 200 million taxes rather than the propaganda that has been allowed, that the opposition has been allowed to get away with, essentially. But I haven't increased any 200 uh, taxes. If they have the evidence, bring the evidence so that we could uh, debate it, essentially. I haven't increased um, no 200 taxes. Uh, but the opposition is also getting away with the proverbial murder, so to speak. You talk about 30,000 um, jobs. They included in this uh, some indigenous community uh, workers who would have been sacked anyhow had the government um, had they returned to office. These were people who were just given some a $30,000 um, uh, a month, some indigenous uh, mm -hmm. people, I think about 2,000 or something, uh, be given a, a $30,000 a month. And uh, basically, um, they had the people, in a sense, I would say virtually doing nothing, essentially beyond maybe working for some of them in some of the areas. What we have replaced that with is the Hayes program, mm -hmm. where people are actually being given a skill, and at the end of the training, monies have accumulated with them that they are given to open businesses and so on. So, in addition to that, in some of the measures, um, if we could focus on what you're doing for the young people, because this is what a lot of people ask about Well, yes. What are you doing for young people in the society? Um, you have increased 
the SLED program to yes. two hundred fifty million dollars, yes. and that's grants. Yes, complete complete grants to our um, young folks, to um, uh, parents of single households, especially uh, women. Um, grants are available to the unemployed um, for ver for various purposes. I mean, if the black pool lady. Uh, requires to expand her business because um, she's making a, a decent profit, but wants to so formalize the business, uh, she can approach this like, program because it's called Sustainable Livelihoods and Entrepreneurial Development. And that is what um, the Black Puna lady will be doing. I, the opposition leader likes to scoff about planting chips and so on, but planting chips have, have, have um, as we say, mine a lot of children. I know planting chips send people to law school. Um, people have owned um, several businesses off of planting chips. So the proverb, the fish and chip, if you know how fish and mm -hmm. chip started. When fish and chip started, it wasn't this kind of business that we have today. You know, the man on Mandela Avenue, when he started, anybody didn't know about him. Selling his, his two, um, his um, uh, barbecue. No, no, is the hottest thing around. He has to get, he has to have a policeman guarding to keep traffic. In, on Mandela Avenue because of how his business has grown. And that is what we would like small business to do. Not necessarily stay where they are, but start small and grow big. Okay, so whether it's the Black Putin lady, the lady who's selling Barrow Channel, and so on, the, these things have potential. It's just that we see them as only just small. But they, they play a critical role in household incomes and, 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 um, and tangential employment. And your ministry will be explaining to people how they can access these grants because yes. this is not a loan this is not no no these are, these are outright no 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 these are outright grants um, and we would like to uh, indicate that if unemployed persons can um, can apply for these grants um, uh, with, with a project ID they will then they'll force be mentored because you know you just can't give people money they don't have no basic training in accounting mm -hmm. and uh, management practices and so on even some people who want to go in agriculture they say they want a rare chicken you ask if you have a rare chicken before no but chicken, as you know, is a very delicate business. Mm -hmm. You know, the chicks, for example, all could die very quickly and all the investment gone down the drain. Then the management and the care and so on. It's not a case of getting up to the 10 o'clock and then tomorrow you sleep away and you always say, remember, I gotta go give them water and so on. So you have to, first of all, mentor them along until then we show them how to drop the project and so. Then we go buy the stuff, help them buy the stuff and so on. Then we, we, we walk them through throughout the life of that project until they could branch off on their own. And a number of people have benefited from the SLED pro, uh, project. They are, are singing the praises of the, the SLED project. I, I know it's not a project that is well known, but I believe back in 2016, uh, none other than His Excellency the President went to the first graduation of students that was held at the Arthur Chung Convention Center. So it is that important and it is, and it is that high pitch. In addition to that, the young people could also do the small business development you can do the small which business, is $100 million. $100 million. You have a number of funds. The Hayes, all the monies under the Hayes are grants also, mm -hmm. the Hayes project. But that is specific to um, the indigenous uh, community. But still, they have a number of youths in the indigenous community, and they have access to that. They have the, uh, the, the Linden LEN program, the LEN program uh, where uh, they give loans to particularly depressed and unemployed people in Linden, uh, housing and agriculture and construction and so on. So they're, they're, I think in, in the speech I pleaded with the unemployed and um, co-ops and other groups to take opportunity of, um, uh, of all these opportunities that we have and all these facilities that we have um, for helping people out of their present distress or unemployed state. So what's in it for them, for them after the, from the tailor shop, the here, dress it from the salon. The that's, that's the people I love to um, see. If they, even, even if you have a business going right now and you lean a little bit more to uh, expand or improve the business, SLED is the program. It's called Sustainable Livelihoods and Entrepreneurial Development. So to sustain your livelihood or to extend your business or to start in business, that's where the thing. And so that program, which was $150 million this year, is now going to go up to $250 million um, next year. That's how... Uh, important we believe this program is uh, in terms of uh, a transition for many youths uh, to before they get big. Um, you know, most, most youths can't go to the bank. They will complain and tell you they can't go to the bank because they don't have assets and despite we have a credit, a credit bureau and so on, many of the banks still rely heavily on fixed assets 
you know, or incomes and so. So a lot of these people may need only 100,000, may need 250,000 to get their business going and so on. This is where this debt program would come. You said in your budget speech too that you're going to operationalize, let's say, the 20% uh, the going yes. to small business. How yes. are you going to do that and well, how quickly yes. could we look forward to that? Well, um, I think the, the, the amendments to the regulations uh, have already been uh, drafted. But, uh, the Public Procurement Commission is leading this. Uh, eventually, they will get it over to me because I'm the one who has to um, take it to um, the National Assembly. And l let me tell you, a, a massive study has been undertaken on public procurement in Guyana. And I think there are so many amendments to be made that we may well have a new law drafted, a new public procurement law drafted. But it will be in keeping with modern best practices on all the different loopholes and uh, lacuna that the present um, law has uh, will be solved in this new one. But we can't wait because the, the Attorney General's chamber is overburdened with drafting and they don't have too many drafters. So we don't know when that um, law will um, be ready for Parliament. Um, so I think what is going to happen, the Public Procurement Commission are going to do some low-hanging fruits, as I mentioned in the body speech. One of them is to activate um, the 20% through the regulations, and um, the others will be like debarment procedures, um, increasing the threshold for certain um, types of procurement. One is the quotation method, and the other one I think is the restricted tending method. And then, uh, of course, requiring agencies um, to do procurement planning before they could actually uh, procure any goods. Because that's a big problem in the public sector investment program not moving. The lack of pro procurement planning in budget agencies. You know, I mean, somebody knows that you, you have to get 10 shares. But so, uh, when are you going to buy the 10 shares? If, you know, you have to go through a whole process of tendering and, and so forth. Uh, you see people, for example, now, in November, attempting to buy 10 shares. They're now going out to tender mm -hmm. to the 10 shares. When you look at it carefully, they may not be able to get it because the time run out. Because you have strict periods of how long you have to go. When you got to do 10, how long you got to advertise. When it comes in, the evaluation, we don't have too many evaluations. By the time all this process is finished, you know. So if you had a procurement plan that says, okay, in January, go to tender. You know, the evaluation comes in by end of January. The chairs are procured by uh, March, you right? And so you also have a cash flow based based on the procurement plan that you have, you will understand whether you can do it or not. But now, everybody says, we need 10 chairs, four desks, five water pitchers, and so on. But no procurement plan, how are we going to acquire them? It's not as if we could just wake up one morning and say, oh, call up X place. Oh, you sell water pitcher? How much are it? OK, and then you sell your driver and say, go, go and get 10. It's a whole process to get to these 10 water pitchers, unless it's your own money. And you're going to try to see if that process could be um Modernize or simplify it in, well, in a way? Well, the process is simplified in many ways. What I'm saying is lacking is the absence of procurement planning. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just wake up and say you want to build a house. You have to go through the whole issue of, okay, I have to, uh, do I have enough money? Okay, now I'm starting from X, I have to go and get the building permits, this, that, and tarot. And then you have a horizon, okay, if I start January, I could be able to get, bring in this house by next year, February. But you only know that because you have put on all the different steps you got to do. The likely time it's going to take and when you're lucky to get in the house. But if you just don't do that, then you may have four years from now, you're still in building the house. The other thing that I've, I've been hearing, and, and I listened to your budget um, uh, over the, the, the few hours that you did it, is that money is circulating, Minister. The, mm -hmm. And now you're talking about procurement. The, the process is, 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 is long. The process is, takes a lot of steps and so on. So as a result of that, money is not circulating. But on the other hand, the private sector and the business community will tell you there's a lot of liquidity in the system. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you? Yeah, well, money in circulating is a, is a, is a, a euphemism for saying that people are not um, borrowing. People are not borrowing. Because the more people borrow, the more money that are, uh, will be available in circulation in the system as a result of um, projects that are being implemented. Part of the, part of the reason for that is, uh, is the PSIP itself. The PSIP is a big chunk 
of spending in, in Guyana. And the public sector generally, despite the fact that we're supposed to be having leaner public sector, is still a large component of the gross domestic product. Uh, and the PSIP is a public sector. And the public sector investment, investment program. program. So part of the problem also is the fact that we don't have capacity in the private sector. Okay, you may, um, one private sector person may have four, five, six jobs in different parts of the country, but they, don't, they either don't have equipment, they're renting equipment, they're leasing equipment, uh, some of the equipment may be old, and so on. So the jobs don't move as fast. I mean, you could go wrong a number of places. You see the Auditor General report speaks about uh, a number of um, irregularities and, and, so, and so forth. You end up pe giving people advance. And, and so on, and then no works are started. Why? It's because they have four more jobs somewhere else. So they not they, they didn't get wrong to starting your job as yet, but they have been given a mobilization advance. And so so they, the next time they, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be getting a payment in a hurry. You know, they've got no, lots lots of so um, the different absorptive, uh, absorptive capacity is not yes, there. It's not there. It's not there. The money is there. Mm -hmm. Because if we we have a three hundred billion dollar budget today. We can finance the three hundred billion dollars. Right? So as you, 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 you've asked and um, um, we have indicated, you have the trillion billion dollars. Can you spend it? Okay? What I believe is some of the measures that we have put in place, having learned over the last two, two, three years of early budgets, we believe that, um, and given the circumstances going forward, um, as it relates to general elections, relates to Republican, Gorsi, and, and relates to, to our readiness to get for, um, to get for oil, that there's an urgency, there's a super urgency of getting um, these institutions and projects in place. One of the questions came, that came out of, of the discussions um, that I have had with various individuals is that this government campaigned on jobs. Mm -hmm. And you talk to young people, you talk to some people who feel they're qualified and they feel that they they haven't gotten the jobs that you had promised. How does this budget approach that? How does this budget make for job opportunities and um, openings? Yeah, well, well let's, let's, let's step back a, a little bit. As I've indicated, growth in Guyana uh, has been concentrated around three or four sectors. In, most of those, in all of those sectors, to be quite honest, <clears throat> they are at what we call full employment meaning that uh, the, 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 the number of workers they're required to produce the output, they already have them. They already have them. So when you're generating 4,000, 5,000 graduates, the bulk of whom are in social sciences, who are going to be able to uh, absorb those numbers in the economy that still depends heavily on three or four um, commodities for growth? And these commodities, don't have much value added in them. They are at the mercy of international prices. You know, take sugar, mm -hmm. right? For many years, we know that the bottom will fall out of sugar because the European Union says they no longer can have the sugar protocol and the special price that, you were, that we were getting, okay? Now, if you have $200 million, and knowing that, knowing that without a special price, you can't survive, right? Because without the special European price, Kaisuku could not survive. So are you going to sink $200 million into it? And that's what, that's what the last government did. So instead of right-sizing Kaisuku now that they, um, they didn't have access to the, the European Union special price, and they will now have to go out there and fend like everybody else, we, we poured $200 million. So we could have used some to right-size guys to go bring them up to efficiency, do what we're doing today, reduce their size maybe to two or three viable estates, use some of the money to um, create other industries or support industry or value adding, you know, uh, some in other crops because fresh fruits and vegetables are still in a, uh, in a requirement in our um, diaspora and so on. We sunk for 200 million US and today the returns are negative in the sense that the treasury now has to pay back loans that were used to um, on Gaisuko, right? And while you also have to find additional monies to pay severance and to pay, and to find uh, social amelioration programs and so on for the workers that um, you are taking. I will tell you right now, Gaisuko still is employing 
10,000 plus workers to produce 98,000 tons of sugar this year. 10,000 plus workers. But guys, who call aside, the other persons who are looking for jobs, are there um, measures well, well, in, well, but in the, the thing is, the, No, but the thing is, allowed. where are they looking for jobs? Because a lot of people want to come out. We are flooded with applications, right? Students who come out from school, for example. We are flooded with applications for clerk work. But there are only so many clerk work um, positions that you can have. So what we have to try to do is, 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 is prepare those people who have just come out to school for the jobs that are going to become available. Or uh, address their minds to jobs that are available right now. You don't have to work in an office to earn an income. We have to change the mentality. The person who weeds in front of you, yard, as you know, you have to pay them $2,000 just to cut a little small spit of grass. And they're not picking up grass. You have to pay an extra five or a thousand more for them to bag it. Now, that's in one within a, less than an hour. They've earned $3,000. It will take you how many days to earn $3,000 in the public service? So the point is, and I've seen it, I've spoken to a young woman who manages a well-known business place in the Sobrienville area. And she is bitter because she says, look, I employ this individual with no skill whatsoever, none whatsoever. They came the early in the first day and they turn up on time. Two days afterward, they're looking for the person. They turn up on the third day at the hour, well past the hour. When they ask, they say, well, you know, the, the woman tell the girl told her, well, she don't like this work, it's too hard. You, got, you have no skill. <laughs> you got no skill, no anything. But the work is too hard. But you've, you're, you're putting, I think, $52.2 billion in the education sector. Yes. I didn't hear you say that you're putting $10 billion into uh, the public service management and the scholarship sector. Well, so we got a lot this of $52.2 billion is mm -hmm. part of that? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We got a lot of scholarships. So, I mean, we've been sending people, um, oh, we have increased scholarships by a massive amount. And we have scholarships for particularly oil and gas sector. We want to wean people onto a sector that can create jobs for them or tangential jobs to them. I mean, right now, I, I, I know for example, in the hotels, hotels are filled and they are building and so on. They need workers. You need laborers. You need carpenters. You know in, in, in Jamaica what they're doing? They're using the people from the National Service. They've just been announced by the Prime Minister that they will use the people from the National Service to help build the houses that they want to go to the decent homes program that they have because they don't have enough carpenters, plumbers, and all this thing for this rapid expansion in housing that they want. We have this here. You cannot get a plumber and you want one. You cannot get a decent cabinet. Everybody who knocks in the nail no car is a cabinet. But when you're done, the work is shoddy because they don't know anything the ABC. You cannot find a joiner. The other day somebody asked me, if I know to find a joiner, I said, well, my dad, who was a very good joiner, he's dead now. You know? But th these are skill areas. And these skill areas are no longer for the people who didn't make it in school, so to speak. These are skill areas for the people with 10 subjects and 12 subjects too. Because, as I said, an income in have a name on it, and it don't have a, 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 um, you know, um, a skill area on it. A person with 15 subjects can still go and do and carpentry in January. But yeah. I think it's a culture change. You know? Every time somebody says they can't get a job, it's a job that they want. Not, not what the market is um, asking for. It's a job that they want. So based on, uh, on the budget you just presented to the National Assembly, what are the new sectors that could make things happen, other well, than oil and gas? Well, well, no, well oil and gas directly. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't have much jobs here. But all the related uh, things that go wrong oil and gas are new areas that will require all that skill level. 
artisans, people um, in, in, in plumbing, in all the different areas, whether it's mason, as building, the building boom is, con is here. One of the reasons why we can't um, accelerate the housing program fast enough is because we don't have enough labor, skill and semi-skilled labor, to build these houses. A lot of people who had their houses just with just the uh, uprights go up is because they just can't find skilled labor to do these jobs. It's just a thin pool of people. Again, as I said, people see these jobs as for, pe for people who didn't make it. As in, they, don't, didn't get, they didn't do well in school and get 10 subjects and 9 subjects and so on. But this is, not, this is not the case. We have to emphasize vocational skills, number one. And number two, having emphasized it, we have to channel the skills into the job areas. And I think that part is what is missing too. You send me and you do a six month training on uh, whatever vocational skill, whether it's carpentry, masonry, plumbing, so And when I'm done, you give me a certificate. But then I can't go, I don't know where the jobs are. And I think we need to go that next level of attaching people to where jobs are, essentially. And with a, a massive public sector investment program like that, uh, essentially, it opens avenues for all kinds of skills. You've, you also uh, announced uh, a number of different measures in the tourism sector. Yes. Um, do you believe that that's, an, that's another area that it persons is. ought it, to be looking it, at? It is, because what I'm saying, we are preparing for the oil and gas sector in a big way. You know, uh, last week, I believe, uh, hotels were so filled with all the different ICAO conference you know, and, and so on, all the different things that are going on, plus people now coming home for Christmas and so on. Hotels were so full, I understand they were having to go on the West Demoraro, up on the East Coast, which is, you know, have the traffic congestions and all this kind of thing. Uh, you know, the, I understand, for example, the, 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 the head of the World Customs Union was coming here and he was only given one night in the Marriott. Then he had to move afterwards. That was how full, he had the cricket and so on. So. This here is in recognition of that and, and having people build um, other accommodation for this rapid rise in the um, people who are visiting Ghana, returning to Ghana and so on. Mm -hmm. But Minister, you see that's exactly what some people may be saying. The government has not announced a vision that says, look, we're going to do this project, we're going to do that big hotel, we're going to do that big stadium, if you see where I'm going with mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that, that that kind of announcement is necessary in terms of, of, of budget projections? I, 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 I don't know the big projects. Uh, look, big projects have certain uh, attractiveness to them in that they give the idea that, you know, all oh, things are really happening, you know. X company is coming and going into the gold sector. But the gold sector, for example, is like, is like petroleum. It's, a, it's a, a capital intensive sector and it only employ these couple of people. But if I were to tell you, for example, the government is ready to build 2,000 homes by 2020. So don't you get excited? Not just about the homes, to tell yourself, well, okay, 2,000 homes by 2020, wait a minute, they're gonna, they're gonna need carpenters, they're gonna need um, plumbers, they're gonna need masons, they're gonna need electricians and so on. I think I know where I can find my niche. You know, and, and, and by the way, uh, the, as I said, I much prefer a thousand small businesses employing three persons than two big projects employing 500 persons each. One can give it 3,000 people, therefore the incomes are spread, the income distribution is wider. One can give it, the other one can give it a thousand people with the income concentrated. Would, would you say that it is a, a budget um, based on projections and promises, or it's a budget based on actual projects and performance? Well, both, because I have to give you hope. When I gave you hope there that, that this budget as a, as a $300 billion budget is a foundation that we build in to rapidly building towards what we know coming in 2020 and beyond. All right, so I am giving you um, physical projects now and hope of what to come, essentially. In 2015, the first budget you presented, you said the government also intends to create a bypass road linking Diamond 
East Bank Demerara to Ogle on the east coast of Demerara. The new road will open up unutilized lands to support a modern housing scheme for 1,100 households, while creating new jobs for Guyanese, as well as establish a more efficient link between the countries to international airports. This budget is a nearly the same thing. Yes, because um, it has to be repeated. Look, when we came into power in 2015, the last government had um, got a promise of 50 million. I think Ramatar, President Ramatar, uh, he went to Inyo and he got a promise that they will provide 50 million for this bypass road. I remember when I was in the ministry at the time, we were talking about the road going straight to Timiri, but suddenly I heard it was going to be up to Diamond. Now, it has to do with money, I'm saying. But anyhow, the government of Inyo promised to make 50 million available, but the loan wasn't signed, okay? When we came into power, I signed the loan. 50 million subsequently. It took, it took us over a year, almost a year and a half after we signed the loan. And you know, for the various reasons um, with Indian authorities, before we could get um, an answer as it relates to contracting a consultant. Now, all the personnel have to be Indian. So we have to have an Indian consultant, Indian contractor, because they're lending us the money. When we finally got the, um, the consultant, he had to come to do feasibility and design. Because when Mr. Ramtar got the 50 million, it was just an indicative amount of what the road would cost. But they hadn't, the designs and all those kind of things weren't really necessarily done. So those had to come. So it's only. It's only last week that the consultant was able to submit his, final, his draft final report on the designs of the road. Only last week. And, and, and that road cost has gone up from the 50 million originally um, uh, indic indicated to 100 and something million. And, and so, so, so this is just the consultant. Now we have to go for a contractor to build the road. Plus, you have to drain the swamp. And we have to drain the swamp. And we have to drain the swamp at our own expense. Mm -hmm. And to drain the swamp is how much? <laughs> I think I, I got the figure there just yeah. to drain the swamp. But the 50 million can do. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a mechanism because we will have to go back to the donor and see if they are prepared to give us the, the loan for the entire road, the entire amount. Or we'll have to find other creative ways to get in the road done. But it, it's a done deal that we have to get the road done. You understand? But we would like to, things to go faster. But in many cases, they are not, these things are not within our poor view. We could only keep them on the front burner. We could only keep them on the front burner. But once the road starts and it comes through, it will indeed do exactly that's what I'm saying. Right? But the road hasn't started as yet. And that's part of the 38.8 billion, I think you said, for infrastructure work. Y yes, yes. 70% would be on stock, on building. Yes, right, we knew in the stock. Because all we seem to be doing, really, is, is maintenance work that should have been done a long time ago. The stock is decayed. The stock is decayed. Um, studies have shown Guyana's at the bottom of the table in the, in the Crabbe region uh, for getting um, uh, a, a dollar, for adding a dollar to the capital stock. Because, as I said, uh, our products are poorly done. So instead of adding to the stock, capital stock, all you're doing is adding money and not the capital. What I mean is that, look, you spend $200 million in, in, in Gaisuko. So that appears on your national accounts as capital. But it's a dead stock. It's doing nothing. It's not helping you. So you haven't got back a dollar out of this. He said, there are a number of years that has happened, whether it be the Hope Road, the Stelling that float away, you know, and all these different things. These, they, you, they show up as capital expenditure every year. But they're not adding to the capital stock of the country. And the Linden to Lethem Road, we are still discussing with the Brazilians. Yeah, well, we, we, well you remember the Linden to Lethem Road. Uh, 
as a game, as I said, if you don't have money, you, you, you have to play the game with whoever is willing to listen, much less give you money. Listen to let them road probably cost half a, bit, uh, half a billion or more US dollars. Now, there is no bank that is willing to lend you half a billion US dollars because our economy is too small um, in terms of uh, value on part of GDP. So nobody's going to lend you 500 million US. So we have to look at it in a, in a, in a what we call a P3 a model, public-private public partnership. Now, we have to find a partner who's willing to do this road um, and not end up in a, in a, in a P3 that, that the Barbies Bridge or the Marriott Hotel ended up. So all of those have to um, be uh, put in place. What has happened now, though, is that we have been able to secure funding from um, a donor, which will be blended by money from the Caribbean Development Bank to do the first phase. But the donor requires studies, even though we've had a number of studies done on this leg road, that donor still requires studies. So the amounts for those studies have been approved, and the studies are on the way. Okay, when the when the, the study and the design for the piece from Linden to Mabura, that's what the money will mostly do, and the bridge across the Kurupakari, that is what the money uh, that the donor and the CDB collectively will be able to do. And you no. are doing that at the same time, Minister, mm -hmm. that you are doing the famous Del Conte Road project, Puerto yes. to Goshen, Goshen yes. to we, Jump. Well, we are doing the phases. Eh? Mm -hmm. We have approached a donor. And um, um, during my travels, um, my recent travels, and we've put that fourth leg to them. So just like how the, the Linden to let them roll, we're doing it in phases. We have the fourth phase. Now we're looking for, we're looking for um, a donor for the second phase. Now we've been in this business. We have been talking to uh, the Brazilians quite a while, as you know. Even even when we were talking with the Takatu Bridge, um, as you know, Brazil. Um, had some fiscal difficulties themselves, you know. But um, we are look, as I said, we are looking at uh, if 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 we can't find a donor to do this road uh, within reasonable rates of return and so on, then it will have to wait until we generate resources from the oil, oil and gas, um, in which we will we'll probably have to do it on our own. But this road is critical um, to our um, long-term uh, economic. Uh, viability, very critical because we're going to a market that is virtually there. Um, by, by, we know all the we know all the descriptions, all the the talk that I have written there too. Why a road of such a nature will catapult that whole south, our southern um, zone into economic. Into but that economic. would not include a deep water harbor sometime uh, down the road. Well, as I said, both of them will have to go together. Mm -hmm. But we'll do the road. Right? I mean, uh, even if you don't get cargo as yet from Brazil, just, one, just doing the road there, you can imagine what can happen. We have enough resources on both sides of that road to make it viable for communities, particularly the indigenous communities there. Just think what it will do for, say, Letem, as a, a, a new maybe city rather than town, really. Minister, we just have some more time on the program, about 10 minutes or, or so on budget in focus. Mm -hmm. Let's look at some of the measures that you have announced this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the measures include things like uh, property tax, the capital gains tax. And an interesting thing was wear and tear yes. on, on, on housing and, and, and wear housing and, yes. and hotels and so on. For those of us who didn't endure the four and a half hours, yeah. uh, give us an a, in a, in a capsule, what you mean by, by, by those particular measures? Well, well, let's start with measures that we think people will understand. <clears throat> For example, the, um, <clears throat> the threshold increase in income tax. Um, that is increased from 720,000 to 780,000. So at least those who have just got a salary increase at the bottom uh, will not have to pay tax because the new salary, the new minimum wage is 64,200, and the new threshold now is 65,000. You know, but so a lot of people will benefit. Even those who are earning 100,000, they will now have 65,000 as their threshold. Um, then we have the reduction in the in the corporate tax for manufacturing companies from 27.5% now to 25%. That's a significant 
that's roughly one point something billion dollars going back to um, to com um, companies. Uh, then of course we have the export allowance for um, non-traditional exporters to hard currency areas. Um, then we have the whole issue of refunds. Um, many of you, um, many people, I got income tax got some refunds me too. Um, but you have to wait, as you well know, as when it comes to income tax refunds, uh, for a long time, long, long time. Um, so now I think people are, will be more inclined to pay taxes if they know they were going to get back the refunds that they owe. So they're going to get back the refunds because uh, we're going to change it out to make, um, give the commission the power to pay back, pay the refunds out of current, current revenue, which is what is being done with VAT. Uh, you know, if you have to get a, a VAT refund, you don't have to wait for it to be voted. Whatever, whatever revenues you collect for VAT, he could pay you back your VAT and so on. So those, and the wear and tear, of course, is a write-off against uh, income tax. So when you make that, when we make that available, it increases the cash, the cash that is available to these companies when you recognize uh, wear and tear of the kinds that we have there as part of the deductible expense, right? Whereas now, that, that is not recognized, and therefore, the chargeable income is higher. Once this is recognized, now chargeable income goes down, right? And you know, depreciation is not an expense. It is just a recognition of wear and tear. Right? It's not really. It's not really an actual expense. It's a recognition that this building that you have here is one year old and has lost this amount exactly. of value. But it increases the cash available to you because you didn't spend any money unless you put it in a sinking fund, so that such that when the building the depreci is depreciated out, you have enough money to buy back a new building. And there are some things that are now VAT exempt. And there are quite a few things that are VAT exempt, as, as I said, as we continue to look in ways of um, giving back and, um, and, and refining the, the, VAT, the, the VAT exemptions um, um, list. And these are, these are incentives in that way. These, these VAT, these VAT um, uh, removals or reductions are incentives. Pesticides. Pesticides, limestone. Yeah, cultural limestone, all things. These are shandy, yeah, even right. um, mm -hmm. indigenous wines. Well, I was going uh, to Pandama. that separately. <laughs> yes, Pandama has um, been behind us. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Bangzi is Banco yeah, wine. Bang. They have been behind us. I think it's fair that they use local uh, materials and they promote a local product. And it's good. And it's good. Um, and Guyana now is becoming sophisticated. I see they've got quite a few wine drinkers. Um, so uh, this will help uh, boost that industry uh, quite well. Then the ICT sector, the yes. connectivity aspect of it. Uh, yes. You are putting a lot of money. In quite a lot of money. It. You know, we got a loan from Huawei mm -hmm. uh, for 30-something million US. And um, they'll be engaged in a, a major uh, project. Uh, in Guyana, then we have the 17 million plus US dollars out of the Griff for the hinterland ICT project. So we're connecting both um, Tong and hinterland in a, in a major way. Um, and things that we only saw in Star Wars, hopefully, can come to Guyana. So that's about four billion. Yes, Guyana and this dollars. Is just for, for 29, just for 2019, just for 2019. Hmm. In terms of culture and the arts and so on. You made some announcements, but uh, as you know, I, I have some interest in culture and the arts. Some of us may not be satisfied that you've done enough. Yeah, yes, but at least it's a start. Um, it's a start. First of all, it's a start in terms of recognition that culture plays a big role and um, quite properly nurtured. And so uh, it could become a whole industry and employment, unemployment, significant employment. Um, we had some high profile visitors recently in Guyana, um, unfortunately, probably wasn't made known, but we had the vice president of the World Bank in Guyana a couple of weeks ago. We had the country director for the World Bank uh, here, and uh, some other high profile uh, people, the, the head of the World Customs Union. And we got some lovely paintings um, that we gave to these uh, individuals, it's not the, not, the world, not the person in the World Customs Union, but um, from the World Bank. Fantastic paintings, but the, and they were done by not so well-known artists, um, but uh, one, one of them was a woman, young woman, young woman, 
And um, the, the, the World Bank uh, vice president was fascinated about it. Fascinated about the PNT. I can you know? also tell you the, the president of the IKO, yes. um, a young fellow, also did a painting yes. for him. And he again was in awe. That yes. This that, that young is coming from the young, the, was, you know. So, well. I, I, so, what are the incentives for them? I, 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 no, I think the, I don't know what the copyright law um, will say, but um, I'm prepared, uh, if, if not in this budget, I'm prepared to look at them as a group and to listen to what representations that they make in terms of what cultural, um, but take that poor young lady. She can go to SLED. I don't know what's her station or her status, but I don't know if she, if she, if, if, if she wanted a, to build a little um, studio or studio equipment or whatever. She set up a project and um, she can go to SLED and uh, ask for assistance to uh, boost her business or to help her display. You know, I don't know if she's in the, um, in the avenue and if she likes being in the avenue or wherever they may be. You know, some people, uh, you know, so it depends on what they want. I don't, I don't, I don't know what if they want fiscal concessions or, or or how they look at it. But this is a very, as you know, unorganized group. I don't know that there are cultural groups that make the representation. I know my good friend Mr. Braffitt, Barrington Braffitt, a couple of times have approached me, um, but I, I don't know in terms of what it is that you want. You've also added Region Ten in terms of the tourism. Uh, yes. Uh, well, as part of that, you, mm -hmm. you you did that with the with, with the intention of boosting yes uh, um, tourism in that part yes of the and country. also to um, to indicate that um, as it was indicated to me we may think that Legion Ten is an urban as part of the urban setting and not a, but Legion Ten lies on the gateway to the uh, interior and in many ways when you go to uh, Legion Ten they need a Philip they need a boost to uh, economic activities in that area. Region 10 has one of the highest unemployment rates in this country. And anything that we can do um, to reduce unemployment and to boost economic activities, uh, this, government will, um, uh, this government will do it. Um, and I believe uh, putting them for whatever incentive, you know, but having said that, I think what is not well known is that Region 10 has an incentive scheme of its own you know, um, that had been put in there, I believe, since 1997, I believe, um, by the last government. There's a, re a special regime for Linden, Kukwani, and Aichun, um, where duty-free concessions and so on, once you invest in, in Linden, can be made available. So the, the, the issue of the hotel um, there is only in relation to depreciation expenses because they would, probably would not, have get, would not have got it under the... the the special regime, but uh, there is a special regime plus this that um, that um, that they can benefit from which they can benefit. I find it difficult sometimes to understand why more investment is not in Linden. They have very skilled labor, highly skilled labor. People who work in the backside the backside sector. Um, they're the gateway to the interior. There's a road. There's a river, you know, and all these pluses. And there's light, and there's light and cheap light too. So. I don't quite understand why um, more people are not investing in Linden. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'll have to ask my Linden friends, really. But Minister, with a minute left, um, you describe this budget as moving us from potential to prosperity. Yes. Setting the stage to move us from potential to prosperity. This budget will actually move us to prosperity, but it will definitely set the stage. It's trending in the right direction. Um, so to speak, because as I said, this is the pre-oil budget, and uh, if you could do pre-oil at 300 billion, just imagine what the possibilities are once the oil revenue starts flowing. Thank you very much, the Minister of Finance, Winston Jordan, speaking about what came out of the budget uh, this afternoon in Parliament, and we'd like to thank you for joining us on. NCN for this special program, Budget in Focus. We'll continue to talk to the other ministers of government with regard to their sectors in future programs. I'm Enrico Wilford. Have a pleasant rest of the evening. Goodbye now. <laughs>